Hi, for this exercise we're going to be doing neon text in Adobe Illustrator Creative Suite 6. So I'm going to start with a new document. It's my profile is going to be web uh, 1024 by 768 RGB color 72 dpi. Okay, there we go. Now what I need are my uh, panels. I have no panels open yet, so we're going to go open with my layers panel and my navigator panel. Navigator, there it is. I'm only going to get the ones I need. I need my, see if I can find it here, appearance panel. These are the three biggies here, the three main ones. Uh, do, do, do. Gradient, we well, want gradient. Graphic styles and swatches. I got them enlarged so we can see what we're doing. Actually, I'm just going to, yeah, that's good. And the first thing I'm going to do here on layer one is draw a single box. For this exercise, we're going to be using graphic styles. These are the default graphic styles. This, you may have a different set than I do, but all you have to do is basically select them and what they will do is they will change the appearance of each object with a different fill. In this case it's a pattern or a gradient. But you can also add multiple layers of different strokes and fills. So this style has three fills and three stroke layers with different depths, uh, transparencies, and different color effects. So what we're going to do here for our neon text is go back to the default which is the simple black single point stroke with a white fill. And I'm going to use my selection tool to extend this all the way across the page because I want to make this my background. Oops, and we want to snap that in right on the edge of the corner there. There we go. And then I'm going to change the fill to black down here. There we go. And I'm going to add a new layer. Lock this layer and add a new layer. You can use the same layer, but we'll get into that detail later. There's many different ways of skinning that cat. Well, first thing I'm going to do now on layer two is draw another square. It's completely invisible, of course. It has the same point. But if I were to select in my appearance panel the stroke for this object, I can go to my swatch panel here and select on a gradient. And you can't really see it because it's so thin, so I'm going to enlarge the path of the stroke to six points. That might be a little too thick. Let's go with three. Now let's go ahead and go with six. And we can see right now that in the gradient panel, it's going from white to black from left to right and that's because we have the angle here at zero. If it was at 90, it would be 90 degrees would be straight up. Uh, 180 degrees would actually be the opposite. 120, varying different angles. We're going to go back to zero for this though. Here we can choose to have the stroke uh, uh, go along. In other words, it wrap around. You see how it goes from white and then gradually to black as it wraps around the object in a clockwise direction. Or we can have it go across the stroke. If we zoom in using my navigator panel here to the corner, we can see that the stroke is now generating across 
the stroke from the outside in. And that's if we have the type of stroke set to linear. We can select radial and now it has kind of a 3D effect where the radial stroke is actually generating the gradient pattern here from the center out to the end. So what I want to do is change this first color in the gradient panel to uh, pink, which is usually the standard neon color. Or we could probably use green. Ah, let's go with hot pink instead. There we go. And then at this end, I want to change this from black to transparent. Double clicking here, we can change. Actually, we don't have to. The opacity is already right here, so we can change. <clears throat> we have this color selected. We change the opacity to zero. And it looks like it's a little thin, but that's okay. I'm going to add another. Actually, I could take this and stretch it this way to thicken the uh, gradient. So now we have the tube part, but we notice this edge here. Uh, under the stroke here in the appearance panel, we notice that we have the type of stroke from the, the color and then the thickness, but there's more. If we click here, notice that this this is a highlighted here, this kind of an orange color. That means that if you click on it, there's other stuff underneath. So if we click on stroke, we get a whole new panel that comes up. We can change the end caps of lines to be rounded instead of flat. And we can change the curves or the corners to be rounded, which is nice here for this. So we can have nice rounded corners like neon should be. And then if we have the aligned stroke, here for a gradient, th these two selections for the aligned stroke are grayed out because otherwise it will cause problems with the gradient. If I were to just select a solid color, choose stroke and from the palette here, just choose a solid color like yellow and then click on stroke. Now we have this option to make the stroke stay on the inside, stay only on the outside or be centered. And we want it to be centered. And if I go back here and I choose gradient again, actually the gradient that I had is gone now. So I have to rebuild my gradient. We notice that it's reset back to the way it was before. So now I have to come back here and, and adjust the default settings again to radial and then apply the stroke across the, or the gradient across the stroke so it looks more like a neon tube. Let's check our path again here in the appearance panel. Make sure in the layers panel that our path is selected. Okay. Click on stroke and we have the rounded corners, rounded cap, that's good, and the stroke alignment. Okay, that's all we need so far for this. And what we need to do if we want to preserve this is add it to our swatch panel here. Gradients apply to the swatch panel. So I'm going to my swatch panel, clicking new swatch. And I'm going to call this one just plain neon tube because it's just gray. There's no color added to it yet. And I also need to, actually I forgot I need to, to uh, change the transparency back here and the gradient. So I need to change this color. Actually I don't need to change it there. I need to change the opacity to zero slide this this way a little more to thicken it and then add it again to my swatches and we're going to call this uh, new neon neon tube 2 I guess 
and that's the one we want. This is the one we don't want. So I'm just going to select this and then delete it and then select this. Make sure my stroke is selected. And that's basically a start. I'm going to choose some colors now and add some more neon colors. So I'm going to, in my gradients panel, double click on this color here and we're going to choose I'm going to use green. Let's see. Kind of a greenish yellow color. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Then I just add a swatch, neon green. and another color. If you notice that when you change this by double clicking on here you're not modifying the existing swatch in the swatch panel. It's not going to change it. So this doesn't modify the current swatch but you just add a new one. Neon red. Next, if we want to have the outer glow that glows around the outside of the lettering, we need to look at the Appearance panel. Under the Appearance panel, we have an Effects tab. And we have to make sure that our path is selected that we want to apply the, the effect to. So under the Effects tab, we have a Stylize, and under Stylize, we have Outer Glow. And here we have our outer glow color. It's going to be red, so I'm going to choose. I'm just going to choose this red color, kind of a bright red color. And the uh, blur is at nine pixels. I don't think I need it that big. This stroke itself is six pixels, so I'm going to bring this down to the same number of pixels. And I'm going to click preview to see what it looks like. And there we go. There's our outer glow. Okay. Now, in order to be able to retain all of these settings, it's interesting. There's supposed to be an effect here. That is weird. That's not uh, not doing what, what I thought it would. We're, we're supposed to see the effect for the outer glow appearing here. Okay, there it is. Under the Appearance panel, the Outer Glow is hidden within the stroke. So we can see it now. Okay, so if there's anything in the fill, nope, nothing unusual in the fill. Okay. So remember, if you add an effect and you can't see it, make sure that uh, you open up these settings here to see if there's anything inside and here's where our outer glow is. Okay, in order to save all of these settings here we want to add it to our graphic styles. Otherwise if you try to add text and then add the effect to add text the way it is now it's not going to work. So you want to make sure you have the style saved so I'm just going to add that but if you look the fill shouldn't be there. The fill needs to be transparent. So I need to change my transparency to make this fill blank. So it has to be a transparent fill. So I'm just going to add another style again here. And there it is. Next I'm just going to add a I'm going to change the uh, stroke here again and if you notice that if I have my stroke selected for the object and I change the color to green, it's not going to change this style here. It's, you're not modifying the saved graphic style, which is very nice. And you need to change the outer glow color to the green color. So we're going to select outer glow 
and I'm going to choose this color. Yeah, that's a good pale green color, I think. Kind of matches the original. Okay, there's our outer glow, and now we need to new to save the new style by going to the styles panel here and clicking there. If we want to change the uh, name of the style, we can just double click on here and it brings up the graphic style, so we can just call this neon green also. Next, we're going to add text. This is the final phase, so I'm going to zoom out with my navigator panel. And I'm just going to move some of these windows out of the way and choose my text tool. Um, I think I'm going to add a new layer. Let's add, I'm going to lock that layer down and add another layer here, layer 3. And I'm going to choose a typeface that is conducive to neon. Cooper is a good one. Uh, you can choose any font you want, but the smooth serifs or the uh, smooth cornered fonts are the best. Let's try this. I'm just going to click. I'm not going to drag a box. I'm going to change my font size to 60. Hmm. still says Myriad Pro, but I'm going to just click here anyway. And we're going to type in Open We can't see anything because the text is black by default, so I need to go ahead and close that. And then we're going to change this fill. Here's the characters in the appearance panel here, the characters. We double click on the characters to bring up their behavior here in this in the appearance panel and I'm just going to change this to uh, white for now so that I can see what I'm looking at. Actually I need that to be uh, transparent. The fill needs to be transparent and the stroke I'm going to change to white. Now I can see what I'm typing. Open all night. That's pretty neat. I mean, uh, Control A to select all the text here, and then come up to my center tab here and center the text. Then I just choose my selection tool, and we're going to just drag it to the center like that. And then I just pick a style. I think I'll pick the red style. Now, there it is. There's our neon. Our neon text. Now if I zoom out, I can hold my shift key down and scale proportionally. See how long it takes to generate? It's got to generate the gradient. There we go. And that's our basic neon text. The cops are coming, I gotta go.